All right, in this lesson, we're gonna cover some of the legal stuff that you just need to know as a blogger. Now, I would be remiss in the legal section to not include our legal disclaimer, which is that I am not an attorney, I'm not your attorney. Jim is an attorney, but also not your attorney. And that for specific legal questions regarding your business, you should seek out the advice of a competent and uh, licensed professional in your jurisdiction. Um, that said, the information that we have here is just generalized legal information that you may find helpful. It's based upon the experience that we have as bloggers. Um, we've been around for a little while. So I'm gonna share some stuff to help you avoid general legal pitfalls as bloggers. Now, down below in this lesson, we'll have quite a bit of text and some links out to some resources that'll help you to be able to put the right legal stuff on your website. For the most part, what we're talking about is disclaimers and stuff, um, just to make sure that you generally protect yourself. But we'll also cover a few other things that uh, will be helpful for you to, to just to know as a blogger. So make sure you read through all of that and just get this stuff done out of the way right now in, in one day, right? Before you move on, just get it out of the way. Okay, but there is one cool tool that I wanna show you uh, to help you on your website, and that is WordPress and their automated privacy policy. On your website, you need to have a privacy policy. Basically, what's happening is you're collecting information about people on your website, whether you realize it or not. You're probably collecting at least some. Somebody leaves a comment, you're gathering their email address and their comment, and maybe some other information about them as well. Somebody um, uses your website, Google Analytics is collecting some information from them. There's all sorts of stuff going on. And so you just need to have a privacy policy that just spells that out so people know and then um, to be able to provide the tools for people should they decide that they want their data deleted from your website. So here's how that works. If I go to a website's back end and I click settings, privacy, if you've already created a privacy policy, you already know this stuff, go ahead here and just select that page from a dropdown list here. If you haven't created one yet, click this create button. What this is gonna do is it's gonna pull in WordPress's default privacy policy text. This is the stuff that WordPress just knows we're collecting this kind of data from people, right? And so, there you go. Now, for each one, they're just gonna have this little suggested text. Go ahead and delete that as you read through each one um, and make sure that it's accurate for what you're actually doing in your business. And so you may wanna change some of the text here and there for example, in this who we are section, it's gonna list your website address. But what you may wanna say is, um, our website address is istemplate.com. Um, it's run by Income School LLC, an Idaho limited liability company. You might wanna provide just a little bit more information there about who you are as a company. Again, just to be totally transparent. But then it's gonna have like, you know, what sort of information is collected when you leave a comment, etc. This privacy policy needs to be accessible to people as they're using your website. We generally like to have a link to it in the foot of their website, but also anywhere where you are going to collect somebody's information, like um, if there's an email signup form, if there's a um, checkout form where somebody's gonna buy a product on your website, um, near where, that hap where that's taking place, you should include a link to your privacy policy. That way people have the opportunity to go read it before they provide that information to you on your website. Now, another cool thing, so when I'm done here, I can click publish. Another cool thing is I can go back, I can click here on the policy guide, and any plugins that I have on my website that have their own privacy stuff, like WooCommerce. <laughs> I mean, if I'm collecting your information to be able to sell you something through WooCommerce, there's gonna be other data beyond what WordPress just gave me. So WooCommerce, because I have that plugin installed on this site, has given me some text to include. So I can copy that. I can go to pages, all pages, go find that privacy policy here that we just created. Then I can go down to the bottom, type in WooCommerce, make that a heading. And then I just paste it all, all of that information. And then once again, I can go through 
and I can fill in, for example, for, we will store order information for X years for tax and accounting purposes. I need to replace that three X's with whatever it is that I'm going to do as a business owner. And now the WooCommerce stuff is covered. I can do the same thing for Stripe. For other things such as like Google Analytics and other things where data is being collected, if I'm not using a special, like a plugin that's gonna pull that in for me, I may need to just go to the website of those companies and find their privacy policy and just link to it. In fact, let's just add that. Google Analytics. And then make that a heading. And then I'll say, we use Google Analytics to collect um, usage data uh, on this website. Let's see Google's privacy policy here, which probably says something like, we don't keep your data private if anybody asks for it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, Google privacy policy. Um, here we go. I can just copy the link to Google's privacy policy, come back here, link out to that, open it in a new tab and done. And then I can publish this on my site and now I have a privacy policy and it's complete. Really in a matter of minutes, you can have a privacy policy up on your website. All you gotta do is just read through it one time and make sure that it's all accurate for your business and for the way that you operate. Now I mentioned another one if people want their data deleted from your website. Technically, um, legally, in, uh, in many places, including throughout Europe, if somebody requests the information that you've stored on them, you have to provide it to them. And if they request that it be deleted, you have to do so. So WordPress has this cool tool here under tools to export personal data and to erase personal data. You just look somebody up by their email address and it'll send out an export of all the data that your site has collected on them. And if they request that it be deleted, you just use the erase personal data tool and it works the same way. And all of that data will be deleted that's how you make sure that from a privacy standpoint, you're generally covered. Now again, make sure that you go through all of the other information in the lesson below to make sure that you cover yourself from a legal standpoint. I'd hate to see you fall into one of those pitfalls and end up having this be a bad experience for you.